Well, greetings everybody and thanks to Tadwig and the University of Florida for hosting this meeting. Uh, I'm gonna talk about Fungal Diversity Survey or Fundus for short. Uh, as Rob mentioned, we're an all volunteer nonprofit community science organization. We were founded in 2017 as the North American Mycoflora Project. We recently dropped the mycoflora because fungi are a separate kingdom, more closely related to animals than to plants, in fact. Fungi are one of three major kingdoms of multi multicellular life on Earth. So our mission is to increase scientific knowledge and public awareness of the critical role of fungi in the health of our ecosystems and to better utilize and protect them in a world of rapid climate change and habitat loss. We do this by equipping community scientists working with professional mycologists with the reporting tools to document the diversity and distribution of fungi across North America. In 2020, we narrowed our focus from documenting everything to documenting threatened fungi and crowdsourcing the data needed to protect them. So we are addressing a major gap in biodiversity conservation fungi. Fungi are ecologically important uh, among other roles. They're essential symbionts with almost all plant species they're hyper diverse estimates range from 2 million to 12 million species, but fungi are poorly known, probably fewer than 5% have been described. And fungi are threatened by the same forces that are threatening plants and animals, you know, climate change, pollution, habitat loss, invasives, and so forth. So the bottom line is that fungi have been overlooked in conservation. The number of species evaluated for red list status by IUCN is negligible compared with plants and animals. So given the decline in funding for mycology and taxonomy generally, we wondered if amateur mycophiles could crowdsource fungal documentation and discovery and fill that gap. Our engagement model has four levels of increasing information value to science, document, sequence, voucher, and super user. I'm just gonna talk about the first three levels here. So we aim to tap into the exploding fascination with fungi, especially among young people, and interest them in contributing to conservation and to science engage them in relatively simple tasks, and then gradually involve those who wanna do more in increasingly more complex tasks. Level one is document in the field with photos that are geotagged and timestamped and uploaded to the internet. So we have two programs that focus on documenting fungi for conservation. A biodiversity database on iNaturalist and rare fungi challenges. I'll tell you a bit about those. We were inspired by two community science projects abroad. One you just heard about from Tom May, Fungi Map in Australia was the inspiration for our biodiversity database. The Lost and Found Fungi Project in the UK was the inspiration for our rare fungi challenges. It was coordinated by the Kew Royal Botanic Gardens. So our biodiversity database aims to address two critical needs common to all conservation work, getting reliable data and lots of it. Unfortunately, many fungal observations posted to iNaturalist like these are of little use for scientific analysis and research grade in iNaturalist for fungi is not a reliable indicator of data quality. So we engage triagers, we call them, to flag substandard observations and help beginners post better images and metadata. 
and identifier, identifiers to review observations and correct or provide fungal names. But it also takes massive amounts of data to predict the probability of a species going extinct. iNaturalist has close to 5 million observations of fungi, including lichens, now worldwide. The number is almost doubling every year, at least in North America. But that's a long, long way from the 1 billion bird observations logged over two decades by eBird contributors. Even though each individual bird observation is far less robust than our typical fungal observation with photos and sometimes just DNA sequences and so forth, a billion of them makes it possible to generate over 300 peer-reviewed publications at last, last count. So we've just started vetting uh, fungal observations on iNaturalist and training beginners to make better observations. So far, we have some 56,000 observations in the project. One obstacle is that each observation has to be added to our iNaturalist project one by one by the observer. Uh, if we could figure out mass tagging or importing observations vetted by experts, we could significantly increase the curated database. Our second fungal conservation program is rare fungi challenges. Now, last October, we launched a pilot project for a west coast of North America rare fungi challenge to find out if we could get people to care about fungal conservation and if amateurs could make scientifically valuable observations. The results were promising. Despite the pandemic and a major drought on the West Coast, seven of 10 target species were found. 91 observations were made by 62 finders two major range extensions and several new locations were documented. And importantly, we found that mycophiles are deeply concerned about conservation. So we're continuing the West Coast challenge now with 20 species, and we're about to launch a Northeast rare challenge that will go from Quebec down to Pennsylvania. Now, uh, level two is sequencing DNA, and that's especially important for fungi because they, their vegetative bodies are microscopic filaments in soil, plants, or woods. Our original emphasis back in 2017 was on helping amateurs get their specimens documented online and DNA sequenced or barcoded. Amateurs registered more than 200 local projects across North America, not all for sequencing. And so far, Fundus community scientists have documented and sequenced more than 7,000 specimens with 1,000 more in the queue. Many of the sequenced specimens represent new undescribed species. Some experts think, think that as many as 10 to 20% of sequenced fungal collections of some taxa in North America could be new to science. And this is definitely a motivator for amateur mycophiles. We've learned a lot about engaging community scientists in sequencing fungi. A major challenge as an all volunteer organization was giving guidance and timely feedback to participants most of whom had little or no scientific tra training. Similarly, relying on volunteers for program administration and specimen tracking led to some service gaps. And finally, making sense of the data generated, the DNA sequences, and determining whether the sequence could be a new species, that requires some really deep professional level knowledge. So the third level is vouchering or saving dried specimens in curated fungaria. Academic mycologists will tell you that everything that is sequenced must be vouchered. And it would be nice if that were possible, but we aim to scale up fund fungal discovery. And especially as high throughput sequencing becomes available and will quickly outpace 
vouchering capacity in costly curated fungaria, uh, which depend on staff and budgets keep getting cut. And it's a real problem finding uh, stable homes for specimens. Even storage of DNA precipitates in ultra cold freezers is costly. So we need creative new solutions. And who knows, maybe something like preserving spore drops on tinfoil could be a fallback for those specimens that cannot find homes in curated fungaria. Spores contain all the DNA and slips are tiny. Um, another thing might be the, the FDA cards uh, is a way you could store millions of, of uh, vouchers and at least uh, preserve the DNA. So this diagram, which I'll just show for a few seconds, uh, shows the automation and tracking systems we'd like to create for our project. But with volunteer programmers, we've only accomplished a part of it. Fundus is currently focused on finding funding for staff and operations and a sustainable business model generally. If we're successful in finding funding, we believe we can bring fungi to the conservation table on a par with plants and animals by mobilizing community scientists. Our plans include expanding rare and habitat challenges, significantly increasing the biodiversity database by orders of magnitude we'd like, sequencing DNA from challenges and local projects, while exploring lower cost, high throughput sequencing and environmental DNA sampling. The end point of all this work is to provide data on threatened species to nature serve natural heritage programs and IUCN red list working groups. We believe that mobilizing an army of community scientists is the best hope for obtaining the data needed to document fungal biodiversity and protect threatened fungi before they go extinct. And I wanna thank all the incredible volunteers that have made Fundus so special. And lastly, to learn more, check out the fundus.org website and you can subscribe to our free newsletter and blog. Thank you.